Hirschsprung disease is the topic, and um, Hirschsprung disease is best um, characterized with this diagram, a very quick diagram of basically the colon. And essentially what happens is you have an area at the very end of the colon that no longer has proper innervation. The nerves are a absent. So as a result, the peristalsis that normally pushes the bowel, uh, the stool along the bowel is not happening. And then the part of the colon that's immediately before it does that does have nerves will be dilated or enlarged uh, or distended. And these uh, nerves, uh, the lack of the nerves is the heart of the uh, the disease. And basically it's known as a congenital absence of um, ganglion cells, ganglionic nerve cells. So that's the key part of uh, uh, the description of Hirschsprung's disease. And what happens is the stool is not able to pass, so you get all this distension in this area, and that can lead to the baby, uh, newborn baby, becoming very sick. Uh, this can happen much more in males than females, about a 4 to 1 ratio. And also, it's almost 75% of the time, it's limited to the distal colon, so just like the diagram I had uh, drawn. So what happens is the peristalsis that normally pushes the stool along is absent and that results in the accumulation of the intestinal contents and dilation of the abdomen. And that can result in the baby becoming very sick. So the initial presentation is normally about 98% of babies when they're born they pass stool within the first 24 hours. Now, when you have Hirschsprung's disease, you basically will will not have that. So it'll be a failure to pass meconium. Meconium is a word, uh, basically it refers to the very first stool that a newborn passes. So failure to pass meconium is a classic uh, clinical vignette um, uh, description. Now what this does is it leads to abdominal distension. It can also uh, lead to obstipation, which is the failure to pass gas, and can eventually lead to vomiting. And if this continues, and this is serious enough, this bacteria in the stool can overgrow, and that can lead to a serious complication known as enterocolitis. So obviously very, very serious. Diagnosis, there's one way that you do initially, that is you give a barium enema. The barium will clearly show this dilated segment of the colon and then the narrowed segment of the distal area, the distal rectum. But the definitive diagnosis is done by doing a biopsy of the rectum. And that's very important because what the biopsy does is it shows you that there's an absence of those ganglion cells, those nerve cells are absent. So that's the definitive diagnosis. And finally, well, how do you treat this? Well, the treatment basically involves surgical repair. Uh, there's no other way. What you do is essentially you cut out the area of the bowel that has no innervation and then you basically pull this area through all the way to the rectum. That's it's called a pull-through procedure. And that's essentially the definitive treatment. So the entire section of aglanglionic colon, this entire section that's not being innervated because of the congenital absence of the nerve cells, is basically surgically removed. And then this part is joined to the rectum the rectal opening basically. So let's take a look at some uh, clinical vignettes. 12 month old infant presents with bilious vomiting and abdominal distension for 10 hours. His mother states that the infant has been constipated since birth and failed to pass meconium during the first 48 hours of life. On exam he is very irritable. His length and weight are both below the fifth percentile 
according to his age. Abdomen is moderately distended. After a digital rectal exam, a fair amount of stool ejects from the anus. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Well, you have all the tell tell signs here. You have abdominal distension. You have uh, the history that the child failed to pass meconium. Now the child is presenting with vomiting. So this is a clear uh, description of someone with Hirschsprung's disease. And then the last one. A normal uh, birth weight term baby with high APGAR scores failed to pass the meconium within the first 36 hours of birth. The neonate also has distended abdomen and has been vomiting and feeding poorly. A digital rectal exam temporarily relieves the obstruction, but the baby fails to pass stool thereafter. A barium enema examination demonstrates a very narrow distal segment of the rectum with proximal dilation abnormalities of which of the following are most likely etiologically related to the baby's disorder. Again, very classic description. I like how they demonstrate that what the barium enema shows. And basically you have a problem where the nerves that are normally innervating the uh, distal colon are absent, congenitally absent. And those nerve cells are known as ganglion cells. That would be choice B.